Hello and welcome to this first GooTP screencast and uh, this one will be about the new GooTP Eclipse plugin which was just released with version 0 0.6. So the first thing I did was uh, to reinstall a fresh version of Eclipse. I took it from uh, the Eclipse download site and I just took Eclipse ID for Java developers in case you're curious. Uh, naturally you can use your own version of Eclipse. The first thing I'm going to be doing here is to install a couple of uh, a couple of plugins. The first one we need is the Google uh, plugin for Eclipse, which you can access from this update site here. So I'm going to do that right now. Google plugin and the update site. Now I'm taking both the plugin and the SDKs answer a couple of questions and we'll just let it install there you have it's done now so the last thing we do is restart Eclipse okay so next we're going to install the GooTP Eclipse plugin and this can actually be found on the Eclipse plugin wiki page, so you just take the update site from here, you add it there, UTP plugin, update site, and what you'll see here is one thing, the plugin itself. So let's install it, again answer a few questions, accept the license, and keep going. Again, we have to restart Eclipse. So the first thing you'll notice now is that you have this, um, well, all the little Google plugin logos, but you also have the GooTP plugin logo now. So that's essentially the only thing you get with the GooTP plugin, but it's really powerful. The first thing we're going to do with it is create a new GooTP project. So let's just name it, test project, and give it a package. We'll use App Engine because we might need it later. And just finish it and see it go. Just creating files right now. And what you see here, actually a bunch of, well, all the files that you actually need to get your project set up. There are no presenters, no views now, but you've got the place manager. Uh, you actually got place where your name tokens are going to be stored so it's all well organized you're not using static strings they're externalized in there uh, you have your entry point that creates your injector so you actually also have the injector uh, with a couple of things that you need in there you have the client module that uh, basically installs uh, all the, the default module of GooTP together with your place manager Something else you get is uh, the GWT configuration file, which has everything, including the GooTP in include, uh, which you see here. And um, by default, the GooTP plugin is using uh, GooTP's dispatcher, so you actually have a dependency there. And this configuration uh, property, which is needed by GooTP. Um, what else do you have? You have some server-side information, so you actually have a server-side module. You have the configuration uh, on the s of the, s uh, the server, and uh, so that's basically everything you get. But this, as it is, will not run because you don't have a presenter. So the first thing we'll need to do is create a presenter. Okay, so let's create that presenter. Um, we'll start by uh, creating a new package in which we'll store all the core presenters of and views of our application. So let's call that. Uh, it has to be under client because it lives on the client. All these presenters and view live, live on the client. And we'll call it core. Now we can actually create the presenter and the view inside that uh, package. The way to do that using a plugin is to simply select uh, new presenter. 
you'll get that wizard that lets you enter everything you need for it. So the first thing we will do is create the um, uh, welcome presenter, which will welcome the users into our app. We'll make that a root level presenter, so we're not nesting anything. Um, we're not nesting that into any parent. It's the root level presenter. You could uh, nest it in a, in a parent if you wanted. Make it standard. We don't want to code split it right now. We'll give it a token, a name token. Let's call it welcome with a bang. Um, so remember that the bang here is used by uh, uh, search crawlers in order to uh, to index Ajax pages. Uh, there are references on the wikis if you're interested. So we'll bind that to a place annotation. You can leave that blank most of the time, but right now we actually want to bind it to a place annotation because this is our default place. So we're just waiting for that to finish and it found this little annotation here that can be used. We just uh, define it here, default place. No gatekeeper. For the moment, I don't really need any method stub. The injector is correctly configured, so is the module, and we can finish this. Uh, also, we're using UI binder. So let's finish this. And some files have been created now. If you look into core, you'll see the presenter, the view, and the um, UI binder file for it. But it's not all. Uh, the plugin has actually uh, filled the injector with a provider for it and it has also updated the client module to bind that presenter and also to bind uh, the default place annotation. So uh, that's it, we have our welcome presenter, let's put uh, some content in it right in the UI binder file, we'll say welcome to this test application. Save it we run, sorry, we run test project as a web application. Start that in Chrome. And if everything goes well, it should work. And there we have it. Welcome to this test application. We have loaded the uh, the welcome page. Uh, if you actually go to the welcome page itself, like this, it's going to work too. Actually, any erroneous name token here will get you there because we don't uh, have an error page defined yet. So let's do that next. Okay, so let's n now create this uh, error presenter. The first thing we do is uh, select the package we want to create it in and we again use the GooTP presenter creation tool. Let's call this one error presenter. It's in the correct package. We want to use UI binder. We actually want to reveal root content again. It's a place and we're not using code splitting for it. Let's call it error. Again we bind it to a annotation we'll see later why but this time we need to call it error place no need for any method stub the injector is correct so is the module we can hit finish and uh, again everything has been created the the presenter the view the UI binder uh, the injector has the new provider for it uh, the module has the binding for it and for its new constant and if you look at the name tokens, you can see that the name token for the error place has been added together with a, a static getter for it. Okay, so we should have everything we need. Uh, the last uh, step is to actually put something in the error view. Uh, so let's say uh, the page you're trying to access does not exist. There. Okay, so uh, it's fine, it's an error place, but we actually need to tell our place manager to use that error place in case of error. So there's a little method we need to override to do that. 
the name of the method is reveal error place. It takes a string, which is the invalid history token that was accessed. So in it, we're simply revealing the error place request. The second parameter, false here, is basically just saying that this error place request. Um, we don't want to change the, the URL, the browser URL to it. Uh, this actually lets the user leave the application if he hits the back browser button. So error place request is going to be a place request uh, with a name token, uh, name token of our error place. The name token for this error place has been bound with um, this new annotation. And that's it. The last thing we need to do is actually create a field for a place request, and we're done. So we can now test uh, our new application and see if everything works fine. Let's make sure everything is shut down before we do that. And we'll run it again. So we've hit the welcome screen, and now if I enter some invalid token, we actually reach the error page, as you can see here. So our error page is working. So just uh, to summarize what we did, we used the GooTP plugin to create a new project, and then we created a presenter for our uh, default place and we create another presenter for our hair place. In the next um, screen task, we're actually going to see how to create nested presenters, and uh, we're going to build on that application in order to add to it nested presenters. Thanks.